So this week I'm back in Berkeley. We have a winter break at UBC. That's actually pretty cool because the usual spring break in the United States is in the end of March. But somehow I wonder like if it's all over the Canada, but at least uh, in Vancouver at University of British Columbia, we have our spring break in the end of February, which is pretty cool. The cool thing about Berkeley is that we have a lot of different fairs on the weekends markets and stuff that's pretty pretty cool so one of the things that i personally struggled with when i was growing up as a kid was i was raised by a single mom in ukraine in odessa region and we let's say like we somehow lived in poverty because we don't when you're raised by a single mom who works at two or three jobs uh, we like were barely surviving and i always had desire to do math to study math because I was so fascinating without even understanding what it is. You have a lot of components that make you an educator and to be a part of academia. The first one is to do research and to know your field and kind of to, to push the boundaries between known and unknown. The second thing is to be the educator because what you do, you spend so much time of observing, under, trying to understand and getting into this like up-to-date knowledge and trying to figure out and see what people of the past, so basically like kind of standing, as Newton said, on the shoulders of the giants. And you're going to be the next giant who someone's gonna stand on your shoulders. And the goal is to just, to take all of this wisdom and to communicate this wisdom to the next generation. And there are the third component, and the third component is to give to the community either to the math community, to your local community, to your community, which is connected to your cultural background. I personally took one year off when the Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022 and founded a nonprofit supporting Ukraine with us and started to do volunteering. You know that feeling that you always want to do something and do you want you to do something good, but usually you either don't have time or you're just telling that I will start it tomorrow or I don't know, like we always find like million reasons why not to do something. And sometimes at the most crucial moments when there is no other choice, when you push to do only one right thing, that's, one, that's when we're going to get courage to actually kind of to be ourselves. And the best part when we have these three components about being a good researcher, be, being a good like educator and a mentor, and also to give the community and when your desire to be yourself kind of combines in all, in all those three components and you just start living the life that you finally want to live your life, that's where, that's when I feel like you find happiness. So that's why like one of the idea, which one of the things that I have been thinking recently about in terms of my current position as a postdoc, like reflecting on my uh, like undergraduate college experience in Ukraine, also reflecting on all other stuff as just being I don't know, like some individual in this crazy society and since i'm in berkeley and like walking in berkeley downtown right now one thing that i remember which i struggled the most as a being a phd student in berkeley is in imposter syndrome so as a background you can say that i did only two years in community college in los angeles pierce college and then I transferred to UCI and did only two years at UCI. During my first year of UCI, I was expected to do research, to take some upper division, like even not upper division, like graduate level classes, um, do some teaching and mentoring, and uh, yeah, and do like a summer project, basically like so many different things. And within like, but they, oh, take the jury test, jury test, a completely different story, not fun, I can tell, I can say for sure. And after this, within a year, the goal was like to apply to PhD schools, which I did. I applied like to around 26 schools and I'm going to make another video about my experience of applying into PhDs and I'm going to outline the steps that I think that you should do. I got into Berkeley and I went to Berkeley and one of the things that I faced there is how much in some sense I was not prepared in the sense that a lot of people there they have been taking algebraic topology, algebraic geometry, 
uh, I don't know, like graduate level number theory and all this like kind of crazy classes in their like sophomore or like junior year. So in other words, like in the, their second, third or fourth year. And I just came to Berkeley only taking introduction to the graduate algebra, introduction to the graduate analysis. And me just facing, how to say like, I didn't have much knowledge at the time. And the only thing that I had is math excitement. But I saw how everyone around me knew so much more. And whenever we're trying to do like homework problems or like talk some math, I feel so isolated and so disconnected from my year because I wasn't able like actively participate. People there, like they're geniuses. They're like, were the people who are, I can, I don't know even how to describe, who are like getting like golden medals and getting like all the top in every possible competition like around the world. So that's why whenever you discuss some math problems with them, they like think about those problems like super, super fast. You will just try, you will spend like five minutes trying to understand uh, a math problem, but they will solve that math problem like within 20 or 30 seconds. I think like it's gonna be good like just to make a separate video when I'm going to talk about one of the misconceptions and struggles of being a graduate student as having like imposter syndrome and feeling that you're not good in math, that it's not yours. And it's okay like to revisit these thoughts that, oh, probably academia is not mine or it's, I don't know, like it's so hard. <laughs> should I quit or should not? All these thoughts like kind of visit us over and over again. And that's, a, that's kind of totally okay. But as a last thing, which I want to say that it's okay to have an imposter syndrome. We all go through that. The question is like, how are you going to deal with it? How are you going to face it? And what at least I figure out up to this point as my own personal experience, the idea is the thing that make that makes you survive all the struggles of being a PhD student and going through being like an alone in the ocean and trying to survive and learn how to do research, how to live life, how to be an adult, is just to have something, something true that you love, that you're passionate about. And just try to focus every day and, and try to not think and focus on the things like how you are not knowing something or how you bad, I don't know, like, in whatever aspect of your life, in whatever aspect of your professional career. But try to refocus that, oh, I, I love this subject or I love this thing in life. Let me try to spend more time with it on, on my kind of, spend my personal time on, on its own and just reflect on it. And let me try every day, whatever I learn, whatever I do, to, to every day to do it better. So in other words, when you have your advisor or when you have all the like smart math pupils around you, don't, don't think about and don't compare yourself to them. The only thing that you should think about and you should compare to is some math topic or some math problem that you're excited about. And it doesn't matter that if this problem is trivial for someone else or not. Yes, it's trivial for someone else, not trivial for you, but you will solve this problem by yourself. Then next day you will move to a slightly more complicated problem. And this is kind of step by steps, you will build up the skills to think, to appreciate, and to solve more and more complex math problems. And that was what kind of my personal journey. That would happen after I came back uh, after one year of my year gap in 2022, 2023. And I finally started to do and think about the math problems that truly excites me, kind of on the boundary between like theoretical and applied math, kind of in the world of like tensors, algebraic geometry, um, like neural networks and kind of this mathematical foundation of machine learning. Like in general, the question is about if you have, if you have some abstract math object and you sample discrete data, kind of some point cloud from it, how to reconstruct some properties of this math object from the point, point cloud data that you sampled it from, that you sampled uh, from it. Yeah, and that's kind of the, more or less my kind of 
thing that I think about all the time is how to reconstruct the continuum and the continuous from the discrete or like what is the family and what is the possible way of reconstructing that so in the same way I suggest you to find your own problem or your own F area or just read books or just try to discover something try to have a journal when you write your math questions and every day just revisit the journal and try to answer or just think about some of those questions and the most important like ask people around asking people around will always help because if you will get stuck someone else will show you will either help you to find the new path or will give you at least some hints on which you can work on and move forward okay this is Berkeley Thank you for watching and I will share more experience of being a PhD in future videos. Bye.